Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today I have some exciting news. I took the Chevy Equinox EV out. It was a little bit cooler. Some things have changed and guess what? It charged faster than it's ever charged before. Let's get into it. So it was a little cooler outside and I thought, you know what, maybe I'll take the Equinox, see if that changes anything with the charging curve. Additionally, we had just gone on a trip and I had done the Boomerang Challenge and the charging was actually looking pretty good and consistent as far as keeping speeds and no GM dip. I hadn't seen GM dip for a while, at least in practice of using the car like you would use a car. So I thought, well, let's go, let's go do this uh, charge test. So I did it, just so you all understand, I, didn't charge my car for three days, got it down to about 40 or so percent. And then I kind of lightly drove it until I got it down to 10%. I navigated to the charger, so it preconditioned. So if you have any questions, that's what happened. The temperature outside when I plugged in was 69 degrees. During this charge test, there were actually a couple issues. At 20% state of charge, um, there was a a cable cooling issue and it dropped to 35. I noticed it quickly unplugged and I moved to a different charger. So then I charged on that charger for a while and I thought, well, this would be a fun time to experiment with unplugging if I see the GM dip. I saw it start to dip. I probably should have unplugged sooner, but I, I just let it go. I unplugged, I plugged back in. It did go up, it didn't drop down to 60 kilowatts, but I wish I had unplugged sooner just to see what would have happened. Regardless, um, after that, it kind of followed its natural curve down and completed. So what I want to do is kind of show everybody the charge curve. And I'm going to pull that up here on my computer. All right, everybody. So here is the charge curve. The red is from the session I just did. It started at 143, worked its way up. At 20%, that's when I had to unplug. I plugged back in, so then it came down a little bit and then built its way back up. It maxed out around 153, and that was in the car. All these readings were taken from in the car. I did hop back and forth between the car and the charger, and it actually pretty much said the same thing the whole time, which I thought was interesting, because I charged the Equinox at the actually exact same unit, but in a different location. They're both BTC power, and it was pulling eight kilowatts. So, I don't know, very interesting. Then it kind of goes until 37%, drops down to 39, 139 kilowatts, and then kind of uh, drops down again at 38, and kind of stays around 123, 124, 125 for quite some time. Comes to about 51, 52%, and then starts to drop down. That's where the GM dip started. I should have unplugged and plugged back in, but I didn't. It went all the way down to 68. That's when I unplugged and then I plugged it back into a different charger and it ramped back up. Very typical kind of GM uh, curve that we've seen, especially from the Equinox, if you've seen all my different curves. Now, in the blue, I have my first and worst charging session I ever did. It took 51 minutes, and you can see how it just drops and takes forever to build back up, but eventually kind of overtakes uh, the most recent charging curve. So. The blue, like I said, took 51 minutes, and the red, the one I just did, took 37 minutes. It is the fastest I've ever seen the Chevy Equinox EV charge. Now, this does not include the unplugging and plugging back in. Maybe that took 45 seconds to a minute, but as far as the actual charging itself, which is what I'm interested in, what could this car do if everything was tuned right? 37 minutes is fine. You know, I'm not gonna say amazing, but it's not the end of the world, and it's it's decent, is what I would say. The ID4, you know, 28 to 30 minutes, so seven minutes more, not the end of the world if you're shopping between the two cars. Now, the thing is, this car has been anything but consistent, so I can't say that uh, this will consistently happen for you. I did wanna note, just because I'm sure people are like, where's the video? I was using my GoPro, I forgot to bring a tripod, so I had to use the suction cup and it kept falling down and the video looked absolutely terrible. So if you really wanna know, I can send you the terrible looking video where you, you can't even see the charge speed in the left hand corner. Uh, but I did use it to go back and kind of find some times and whatnot. 
So I'm gonna pop over here, cause I think this is really interesting, is the 10 to 50% charging time. So it took 17 minutes to go from 10 to 50%, and that's that's pretty good. And if you, you figure at 50%, you have, with EPA, you have about 160 miles, and with my range test, you have about 130 miles. So 17 minutes to get 130 miles, drive two hours and then do that again, that's actually not bad. And during my boomerang challenge, I kind of saw those consistent speeds and this is not a miserable road tripper if you um, follow the charging curve like this and leave once the speed starts to go down. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna say I'm happy with it, but I think it's good. And I think if GM could fix the software, uh, that way this happens consistently. I think I could really strongly recommend this car with the charging. Um, as of right now, it's hard to just because it's so inconsistent. Uh, but most people, if you know, you're know you in no rush, it's not really gonna matter that much for you. But for people who do wanna get where they wanna go in a timely manner and they wanna they want to know that they're always gonna get the same thing, maybe just wait a little bit, see if GM can, can work this out. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention was some weird things I've been noticing with my Equinox. So when I first got my Equinox, I measured the capacity and the capacity was 89.7. I had almost gotten 90 actually, kilowatt hours. And that's like how big the battery is supposed to be. The battery supposed to be 89 kilowatt hours. And that's what I was getting with my calculations and with what the car was saying, which I thought was really interesting. And over the past few weeks, the capacity's actually gone down. So now it's saying 86 kilowatt hours. So either I had degradation, that's what, like three or 4% degradation, which I don't think is the cause, or maybe the car's like kind of figuring things out. I, I don't know, or maybe there was an update. I really don't know, it's just really strange. I've never seen it before and kind of, since the capacity went down, uh, the charging's improved. So there's a little bit of a, a relationship there. So I don't know. I wonder if any of you have noticed where your car says the capacity has actually gotten a little bit smaller. Um, I think it's really interesting and worth noting. Uh, I'm just gonna keep doing charge tests and enjoying the car as best I can. I'm really looking forward to Tom Malagny just got a Chevy Equinox EV and I wanna see all his charging results. Based on his initial kind of um, post on Twitter, I think he got the same kind of deal that I got when I first charged it, and I would be really interested to see what happens with his car over time as well. Because this is just, it's just so strange, and I, I can't, I hope it can't just be my car. Anyways, this is just a quick little video. I hope you all found it helpful and interesting. I'd love for you all to share your charging experiences down below, especially if you have that 10 to 80 or 10 to 50% uh, charge time, uh, just to see what people are getting. And also what capacity or what energy being used by your car uh, is that your car is saying right now. Cause like I said, mine's gone from 89.7 all the way down to 86, which I thought was interesting. So again, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please remember to give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will catch you all next time.